In this channel we have done a lot of different RC airplanes with different materials like foam board, styrofoam, even cardboard. I made a RC airplane made out of cardboard. We still have many different techniques to cover in this channel, like classic techniques using balsa wood. But today we're going to make a matte project using spare parts or airplanes that haven't been used for years or months, yes. So I'm going to take the electronics, uh, wings and fuselages from different airplanes. I have many of them here. Let's see how I can uh, manage to put everything together and make it work. What you see now are all the airplanes that I don't use and I'm going to select few parts to put together a new airplane. I chose the wings of an airplane called Sky King, which fuselage I just threw away because I'm not using it anymore, and I'm going to use the fuselage of a toy airplane Cessna 182. And because this airplane is very small, we're going to need nano electronics and I was using them in another project called Joy Wing. The Joy Wing is very fun and very small, I recommend watching that video, you will see the link in the description below or on the screen. I'm thinking to use a low wing configuration for this airplane. And after taking the servos, I'm also going to use this motor because it's the right size for our project. The receiver is also perfect because it's very small and lightweight and it's compatible with FR Sky. The connectors are a bit simple but they are compatible with the servos I'm going to use. And by the way, if you are not subscribed to this channel, I recommend doing so. It only takes about 4 seconds to subscribe and maybe activate the bell so you don't miss any other video. I'm going to cut the vertical stabilizer because I'm going to turn it into a V-tail airplane. Just to make this project a little bit more complicated. Now I have to figure out a way to put everything together. I have to glue the wings to the fuselage, position the V-tail, then put the electronics and try to make everything work. Now that sounds simple, but you know yourself if you have tried to make an airplane fly from scratch and it takes a little bit of work. I want this airplane to have aileron, so I'm going to use a very strong servo from the Joy Wing version 2. At least that's the idea, I'm not sure it will fit in there, but I will try and I'm using the servo because it's very strong, so I can manage to move both ailerons at the same time. Now I spent a lot of time just thinking and figuring out how to put things together and make it work. There is no instruction manual to do this, but of course it's possible and you need to be patient. The glue I'm using is CA with an accelerator, so it dries very, very fast. The only thing is that this glue is not great for this kind of material, but it will do the job. If you ask yourself what glue is better for this kind of material, UHU is the best. At this point I'm going to see if the servo fits in there and it will control the ailerons, but uh, bad news, the servo is too big and the arm also is kind of small for reaching outside of the fuselage, so it won't be possible, it will be very awkward. So I found two extra nano servos among my things with the same connector for the receiver and everything, so I will use a different servo for each aileron. And of course I'm going to take more hardware from other airplanes that I'm not using, like these control horns and push rods. I'm going to partially connect the electronics to test the servos. And here you can see the servos functioning, but the only bad thing is that they don't have too much range, so they don't move too much. 
and I'm not sure yet, but I think that will be a problem. And now it's time to finish the electronics. I'm going to use a micro ESC, which is enough for the motor that I'm using, but I will have to use a buck converter to step down the voltage from the battery, which will be a 2 or 3S LiPo battery, to a safe 5 volts that my receiver and servos need. I started to test the motor to see if it works correctly and then it started to fail and that's because this motor is a rewind motor that I did before in another project and one of the connections between the wires going to the ESC to the coil were having some trouble. So I soldered them again and then put a lot of CA glue to plastify and harden the connections so it won't happen again. Finally it's the moment to put all the electronics inside our airplane and that's what I'm doing now. Make sure to align the motor properly. What I do is with the propeller, look it from above and from the side and make sure it's aligned. And we're getting close to finish this project. Now what I have to do is make the control horns for the ailerons. I decided to use these white servos on the ailerons because they are superior quality. They have a wider range, so they move much more. I even made a mix in my radio to use flapperons. And we're almost ready. The only thing that worries me is the low movement that I have in the tail surfaces. It doesn't seem that I will have enough control. But I really don't care, I will go out and fly. Yeah. There's definitely something that is not right, but I will try it again. It's very unstable and as predicted the tail surfaces are not enough and also the ailerons are not working quite well. So I'm going to try and fix some things and try the next day. But the next day, look at the weather. What a piece of shit. The day after that was a little bit better but still windy as you can see. Either way, I took the risk to fly this beautiful, well, not that beautiful, flying machine. And as expected, it was a failure. But I kept trying until I got the hang of it. Most of the problems were caused by the poor elevator control, also the instability of the low wing configuration, and maybe the balance. And after this big strategy, I decided to change this airplane right there in the field. I changed the low wing configuration to a high wing configuration for more stability. As you can see, the results are a lot better. Still, there's not enough control of the elevator, the wind is too high for this little airplane, and also I have to use a little bit of ailerons and rudder at the same time to make the turns. It was very interesting to make this project because you have to figure out stuff and see what doesn't work to improve it, and that way you gain more experience. Failing is part of it, so you don't have to be afraid of failing, and I hope you liked this video. 
If you would like to learn more about RC aircraft, how to build them and fly them, I will start the production of an online course. If you are interested, you can go to the link in the description below and subscribe for more information in the future. For now, thank you for watching this video and I'll see you in the next project.